Hey family, welcome to the Love You More show. And uh, do me a favor, hit that little notification bell, okay? Make sure that you click that on to make sure that you never miss an episode. And of course, make sure throughout the show, you like, share, and you comment. I do hope you enjoy this show and um, I'm looking forward to it. It's coming up next, flat out. Next on the Love You More show. And little girls need nurturing. What was that? Um, pr- uh, prison. The Bible would sit next to my bed on the nightstand. I wouldn't pick it up. You know, I would be in that empty place, that dark place. I've known my whole life to call on Jesus. I talk to so many married people and people don't realize it's a real partnership contract business thing. Like, yes, you love each other and you want that love and stuff. But when you have properties, children, assets. Don't get divorced. What does safety look like real quick? Safety to me yeah. is a healthy man and a man that asks God to lead his life. Like, And then, you know, financially stable. And we oh, he got to have a bag. Come, we got children to raise. I'm not, <laughs> She's gonna look I'm not gonna be like a sir. Love you more. Love you more. Wow. Welcome to another edition of the Love You More show. Excited about this beautiful opportunity today because I've been watching thousands upon thousands of people watch this show. Do me a favor. I'm so tired of people just kind of skimming through and not becoming a part of our family. Right. So I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment. Hit that little notification bell to make sure that you notify with all of the updates that's happening on this show. Now, last week was really an inaugural opportunity for you to hear uh, me. Music. I got all the messages with a lot of people saying, I didn't know you sang. Well, I kind of did like a switch of ruin character. Okay. So back in the day, 2002, I got my first record deal as this dude named Pretty Willie. Now, if you look right now, you could probably see all the pretty gone, but I'm holding on to handsome pretty good. Okay. Let's get that out the way with these hoochie daddy shorts on at this big age. Come on, somebody. We got it. Come on. Let me tell you something. When you get my age and you can still put some shorts on like this and have shea butters on your knees, that's something that most people can't believe, okay? 2002, I'm pretty willing. I signed this deal with Universal. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm on the same label as this guy that you may or may not know. His name is like Nelly. (laughs) Um, Who knows him, right? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But Nelly's the biggest artist in the world. He sells 30 million records total. I sell like 30. Like, that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they kicked me off of Universal and I became a relentless entrepreneur. And uh, I came out with a song called Lay Your Body Down, another song called Four Walls. Then I came out with a song called Good Thing, all independently. And this thing called MySpace was just coming out. And um, I ended up going in about 25 million hits, signed a deal with Warner Brother Records. And I'm out there doing songs with this guy named DJ Quick and this other guy named Gang. And I know that I got a call in my life and I get the record deal. And back then, you know, I'm smoking, smoking at that time. I'm outside having a smoke and I hear the Lord say, your way or my way. And so I transitioned back to St. Louis and I decided to do God, do it God's way. And I started to do video vlogs. And I woke up one day, 365,000 people had watched one of my videos. And I said, ooh, that's a God wink. I'm going to go this him way. So I put the mic down in hopes that God would give me another way to be successful because I never wanted to pimp the musical gift. If I was doing it for money, I love the art so much, I never wanted to pimp that gift because I know it's too powerful. I put it down, and now he's showing me that I could pick it back up. Because number one, I ain't got to pimp the gift, gift child. I'm doing pretty good in my life. Oh, Shanta. Come on, somebody. And um, so, love you more. And the Clockwork record did really well yesterday. I mean, last week, and I'm excited about it. And so today I get the esteemed privilege to hang out with the young lady who actually plays my wife in the series. Now, a lot of people was in the comments, and you were like, I seen her from somewhere. Well, you probably seen her on a lot of movies. She's on Saints and Sinners. She did television. She does television. And uh, just a really, really amazing person who obliged to be my wife on camera uh, with just a text message. I didn't even have to propose, get on one knee, <laughs> or give her a ring. The one and only Jasmine Burke is here hanging out with me. What's going on, Jazz? Hi, Willie. Girl, you do that so professionally. <laughs> How you been? I'm really well. You Very look well. really well, too. Yeah. Indeed. I'm talking about skin looking good. Thank you. I just got back from Tulum. I spent a month in Tulum for my birthday. Katie, you hear what she said? Black people (laughs) saying they in Tulum. Spell it for me. T-U-L-U-M. I'm going to go one day. Tulum, Mexico. We seen you on there. 
Oh, yeah. your Instagram. I, I got a crazy tan. Look at my tan. It worked out well for you. It did. So, although I know you may have seen it, the way we do it here on the Love You More show, um, I like to show you a little bit of last week's series. Okay. And I do that for you. And then I also do it for them because they didn't subscribe like I just told them because they've been disobedient. Let's subscribe. Get, okay, let's get the that Love out the way. You more show. So I want I want you to check out a little bit of the video that you're actually in okay. that premiered last week. It's going to go over a trillion million hits. You just got to go over there and watch it. <laughs> and uh, I want you to check it out. And then we're going to talk a little bit about you, your career and love. Wonderful. Let's do it. Let's check it out. So wifey started counseling and she thought it would be a good idea for me to come to counseling. Man, don't nobody really want to do this. Because I know she's been telling this woman all my business. I walk into counseling. Dang. I didn't know her counsel was this fine. She been telling all my business. I walk in. Hey, ladies. Oh, um, I was at the wrong spot. And um, uh, I thank you for joining us. Truly my honor. Willie Mo. She. Nice to meet you. My honor. This is my counselor, April. So nice to meet her. Wifey like. So glad you can make it, darling. It's truly my honor. You look amazing. You do too. Energy in the room, a little tears. Wife done told my business. So let's um talk this out. In front of her, damn. I'm like, okay, you ready? I am, you know, um, whatever you want me to do, I'm with it. Are you going to tell the truth? I promise I'm going to tell the truth. You worth it. Her eyes lit up like a Christmas tree when I told her she was worth it, child. Time waits for nobody. But if I could turn back the hands of time. I would do you better. I just want you to know the love I have for you. It's like the clockwork. It never stops. This is Lag Out. Now I am not a mind reader. But I can tell you're lonely overlook. But what's funny is I put a ring on your finger. We both said I do. But we both know the truth. And lately we've been feeling single. Don't take the time to love each other right Preachers say we need communication Tonight let's be some love language So Jasmine, it was such a pleasure working with you. Likewise. Um, getting the opportunity to see your chops. Now, here go the thing. When you click in, like you really, really, really click in. Like you really pull something out of me. I had to become like an actor. Mm -hmm. But in real life, let's talk a little bit about love. Okay. Because I've seen some of your films. It's like love scenes in those films. Mm -hmm. um, you know how to put your sexy on when you need to put your sexy on. You just, it's just click. Is it hard to keep a relationship when you are in this field of endeavor if you're not with a person who actually understands the art? Is it like a tug of war with them? You'd be surprised. It's hard with the people that are actually in it, too. Really? The people that do the exact same thing I do. It's hard for them to wrap their mind around it as well. So it's I don't even think it's that. I think it's just a man thing yeah. is what I'm finding out. But it, it's a woman thing, too, because... Women who are married to, engaged to dating male actors mm -hmm. have to deal with seeing them on screen, kissing women, yeah. being intimate with women and wondering. So when you kiss me, is it for real or are you acting? That's so like, weird. that's what I always hear. They'd be like, I don't know if I can trust what you say because you might be acting. And I'm like, fool, you are not paying me. I'm not <laughs> on your I'm not on your clock right now. No, yeah. this is a real skill. This is a craft I studied mm -hmm. when I'm on screen, when someone has hired me to play a role. I take it very serious because I realize that this is a gift mm -hmm. to be able to channel people's emotions and what they might be experiencing when they're going through this and that. Like mm -hmm. I have to make it real mm -hmm. in order to be you know, great at what I do. I have to make it real. Mm -hmm. So I have to tap in. I have to channel things. And I'm like, I'm like sir, I'm not tapping in and channeling anything because that's a real skill and a craft to be able to do that. Yeah. They, they don't get it. Yeah. I see just a little bit of frustration when you're trying to explain like 
to certain people, Mm -hmm. like how has that maybe helped or maybe hindered like real relationship as it pertains to men being able to take you serious or they take you too serious and then they try to kind of stifle or become a lid instead of allowing you to fly and be free as you want to be. Like, like I really want to get into that because right now on the other side of this, there are so many successful women. Yeah. Like nowadays, I think the studies have shown that, you know, it's almost 50 50 in terms of success financially as it becomes from women and uh, and men, especially Mm -hmm. African-American women and African-American men. So like how does Jasmine really posture her heart to still want love when it kind of feel like there may be some disappointment that have come from guys who didn't understand your craft, your art and who you are? Well, I mean, I realize that. Everybody is not meant to go with me Mm -hmm. you know some people were I met them they were meant to teach me something bring Mm -hmm. out something in me Mm -hmm. that maybe I wasn't even aware of Mm -hmm. and like maybe I was looking at it like negatively because Mm -hmm. the emotions I was feeling but really those emotions were like calling me to like answer something deeper going on inside of me Mm -hmm. so that's that's the mature Jasmine yeah. Just FYI. Well come on give me that (laughs) that's the mature Jasmine (laughs) come on I want to hear about and then this said <laughs> and then I said does that ever come out or like can you like hold that part in because you still no, have no, no 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 Jasmine Burke yeah. is like no character I play like okay. in my real dating life yeah. I let men know I let men know what does that look like I I, I go I is it this say, or is it it's, yeah it's this. it's this this comes out because like I feel like now you're trying me mm-hmm. And why would you try me? I'm here on genuine terms. I'm che- I'm here with genuine intentions. Like, mm-hmm. why would you do this? Yeah. So, you know, in the series, you and I, we go to counseling because you think it's okay. You know, now therapy has become the thing with everybody. Yeah. Shout out to Charlemagne, the guy. He got me and going to therapy. Um, I'm going to be honest, you know, before I transitioned out of my former relationship, I did two years of therapy and counseling. Then I did a year of separation before I decided to exit exit my relationship. So I'm like a strong believer in therapy and counseling. Do you think us artists should embark upon like therapy? Because even Denzel Washington's wife says when he gets in the character, there's been some characters that he's played that he couldn't snap out of. He couldn't shake them. He couldn't really shake mm-hmm. them. So, so in your relationships, do you embark upon counseling? Do you think it's important for a woman who's in the industry to be in that? Because there's so many different characters that you have to embark upon. I think if you don't realize that what you're doing is a job as opposed to who you are, mm-hmm. then yes, you can get caught up in that snare for mm-hmm. sure. Like, I have been able to make the separation because a lot of times, like earlier in my career, I would be saying to myself, like, as an artist and and keeping myself on track and keeping focused of what's important thinking about okay craft versus finances Mm -hmm. right and like making choices based on this or that Mm -hmm. if I'm making choices off of financing nobody has time to think that deep about a character Mm -hmm. like oh I'm going to like put my life into this character to where I can't separate my life from theirs Mm -hmm. I believe there's a skill level to being able to keep the two separate, even Mm -hmm. when you do the deep dive into the character. Mm -hmm. And that's what I stress to artists all the time. Yeah. Like, cause people, they, they want you to go for broke with it. Right. They want you to go sleep in your car for it. They want you to go, you know, (laughs) max out your savings for it. They, they put this thing on it. Like, Oh, if you're not, you know, if this is all your only plan, if it's not your only plan, it's not your plan A, it's not the only thing you're thinking about and eating about and sleeping about, mm-hmm. then you're not passionate. It's like, no, bro, I-, I just got bills to pay. I'm grown. Yeah. That's all. I'm serious about this. Yeah. I'm very committed. But there comes a time in artistry and the journey of an artist where you do have to start thinking like a business person. Yeah. So I used to make decisions out of the craft. 
Mm-hmm. And now I've learned how to like balance and put them both together to make sense for my life. And so I could be happy. I think a lot of artists aren't happy mm-hmm. because they don't feel successful. They don't feel like they're achieving what they really, really want to achieve. Like mm-hmm. that mountaintop achievement in your mind. Right. People feel like, oh, if it's not that, then I'm not happy yet. I'm speaking to myself right now. Right. And so I've definitely felt that. But then I have to say, but what that put me in a position a lot of times and for many years, very unhappy, right? very what, unhappy. What did, un- what did unhappiness look like for Jasmine? Like, what were some of the things that made you unhappy, whether it's with the industry, whether it's with like, man, like you suffer, well, you go through a lot of no's when you're auditioning. Mm-hmm. Does it ever, do, do any of those no's ever hit baby Jasmine who maybe experienced some no's there? You know, and and of course, I like to build a bridge of conversation because Mm -hmm. I believe that if a testimony is a bridge to somebody's heart, you know, my mom, January 6, 2009, we found her after being adopted in January 6, 2009. After they found her, she said she didn't want to meet me. Years later, of course, we realized she had a brain aneurysm. She don't even remember that. She says that she would have never done that if she was in her, you know, in her right, you know, situation or yeah. what have you. But I just remember after that day, I had this relentless grind and I was going to show her what you missed out on. And I was no longer doing it for the love of the craft. I was doing it to win at all costs. It became very exhausting. And I'm thankful that I get a chance to do it for the love. How does Jasmine navigate baby Jasmine with the no's that come from the industry naturally because every role, every part, every opportunity is not our own? Does it prick something on the inside of Jasmine? When I receive the no's? Yeah. At first, you don't feel them. Mm -hmm. It's like little bee stings. And then, like, as you receive, like, a thousand more bee stings, like, one after the other, after the other, it gets painful. It does. It gets yeah. very painful. It it had it got painful before yeah. for sure. How did Jasmine grow up? What what was home life for Jasmine coming up? Because I know performers, mm-hmm. we sometimes have this thing where it ends with me. I'm going to be the one who breaks everything. Yeah. I tell everybody all the time: yeah. alcoholism ends with me. Mm-hmm. Poverty ends with me. I wear this on my shoulder. Yeah. And then I'm like, wait a minute, God, I surrender. Hell, this is too heavy for me. It's <laughs> you know what I mean? Lot. So so I want to know, like, can you give me a little backstory? Because somebody's on the other side of this thing and they want to be in the industry. They want to be the person that they want to be. But maybe the motive is unique. Like, what was it like growing up for Jasmine? Well, growing up for me, it was myself, my mom and my little brother. Okay. But I was a uh, it was just me and my mom for a very long time. So even when my brother arrived, love him dearly. But I still felt like an only child. Mm-hmm. And um, was he younger? I mean, yeah, really younger. Yeah, or? it was. It's a gap, okay. a big gap in between okay. us, right? Got it. Um, so I felt like an only child, mm-hmm. and so I always kept that thing about me. Like even when he was like around, I was like, I mean, I felt like an only child. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't want my children when I do have them. I don't want them to be too far apart. I want them to be able to play with each other and have mm-hmm. each other. That's important. Mm-hmm. I feel for my experience. But it was me and my mom for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, we were homeless, you know, we lived from family to families, house, couch to couch, mm-hmm. um, in hotels and shelters. And my mom was working. She had a job mm-hmm. and we still had to live like that because it's expensive to raise children. And if you're a teen mother, like my mom was and didn't know anything about finances or how to even provide for herself. And now you have this little girl that you have to look after. Mm-hmm. It's like. I um, applaud my mother because she did the best she could Mm -hmm. with what she had. And what she knew was to try to keep a roof over our head. And that's what she did to the best of her ability. But because of that, she wasn't able to focus on the nurturing part. And little girls need nurturing. What was that? Um, uh, Prison. More Love You More podcast after this. You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap 
and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away, and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Wow. To check out the first episode, log on to loveyoumore.com. And little girls need nurturing. Where was dad? Um, pr- uh, prison. So dad's in prison. Mama's doing her best. Did you ever get an opportunity to build a bridge with him and build a relationship later? I was grown by that point. Like mm-hmm. I, my grandmother, God rest her soul, grandmother Lois, she would take me to go visit him in prison sometimes. Mm-hmm. But that was just like a few times. Yeah. And I was very young. I was like nine, eight yeah. years old. Yeah. And I didn't see him again until my high school graduation. Yeah. And he came to the high school graduation. But I guess like with his own embarrassment and guilt, mm-hmm. he, don't be mad, dad. It's just our life. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you didn't want it happen, you shouldn't have did it. How about yeah. that? So, yeah. but we cool now. But he got drunk the night before my graduation yeah. and didn't make it to the graduation. And so it was like, yeah, I was like, I haven't seen you since I was like eight, nine years old. You come to the graduation, you couldn't keep it together for just one night, you know? Mm -hmm. But I had to grow up fast emotionally because like if I let that tear me down Mm -hmm. to a point where I couldn't function and get on with my day and Mm -hmm. still celebrate the people that were there that came out of town to see me. Mm -hmm. But you thought of him the whole time. No, I didn't. Okay. I was numb at that you point. You was numb too. You numbed it I in was that numb. moment. I, I, I was numb at that point. I was yeah. like, I know I have a father out there, but yeah. I don't know who he is. So let me get on with this thing. And and going back to how I was raised with my mother and mm-hmm. not having the nurturing, mm-hmm. you know, all I saw was a woman in survival mode my Nurt- whole life. Grinding. Yes. I didn't get a chance to see her nurture me and love on me and hug me, tell, tell me she loves me. She just, she could do the basics. And so seeing a woman in survival mode my whole life, I didn't even know the effects of that. And I took on that as, as my torch, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that, um, oh, you have to be a survivor yeah. in life, I you get know, it. get on with it, you know, keep, keep your mind focused on providing your basics in life and yeah. you'll be all right. The emotional stuff will work yourself out some kind of way, but you end up numbing it. Yeah. That's so, how it works this works itself out. So what so what what are the effects of kind of like the numbing this thing? You know, I would say, and you know, I always just like to keep it real in conversation. I would say like my numbing at all, um, number one just came in the form of working. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I just like to be celebrated. I realize now that, that shit was like a form of codependency. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just want everybody to like me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to step on any toes. Like, I'm this guy who really wants to be liked because I just felt like I didn't have a lot of self-worth just because the person who was assigned to have me, love me, nurture me, um, they decided that they would promote me to adoption. But it took me a long time for me to believe that it was a promotion. And then I decided, I said, you know what, if I'm going to blame her and him for not ever coming back to get me, leaving me as an orphan, but I still became massively successful, then I better blame their ass, too, for being massively successful because they also had a role to play in that as well. So my question to you, um, just I do want to go back real quick. Um, I will say that for a man who doesn't know how to communicate, not taking it for your dad, I know you guys have a really great relationship or you built built a great relationship now, mm-hmm. but I will say I had struggled so much with shame and guilt that I would have to wake up with Jack Daniels in the morning just to kind of numb it because the pain was just so much of embarrassment, guilt, public scrutiny. Yeah. And then the Lord told me I had to feel it so I can heal it. But a lot of men, like we ain't calling our partner be like, man, I ain't seen that girl since she was nine years old. Mm-hmm. Hell, I got to go to her graduation. 
Like, we don't do that, but ladies yeah. will get on the phone with their homegirl, like, girl, I got to go see my little son. I know I've been locked down, but girl, what you think I should bring him? What should I do? And we'll go into gifts, but fathers, we just don't have that. Making no excuse for his decision, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I will say I understand. I get it, too. Yeah. I get it, too. And my mother was instrumental in opening my eyes. She said, stop looking at, she was talking about her own self. Because like, it mm-hmm. got to a point when I was an adult where I couldn't, like, numb it anymore. I couldn't suppress it anymore. Like, going all the years. And, and I grew with the applause thing, too, right? Yeah. So when I was a child, the thing that I have discovered, I've connected the dots, that drew me into being an actress. Yes, I had a natural gift for having a personality and I was, you know, right. different. You know, I had an extra brightness. I think all children are bright, shiny yeah. stars. You just but had a little I just had a little sprinkle. extra sprinkle. Come on, sprinkle. <laughs> put the sprinkle on there. The yes, spr- Lord. The Lord put the extra sprinkle on yeah. me. And um, but what it was, the applause, like getting on that stage and being in theater yeah. in elementary school and having people come up to me and say, and nurture me. Mm, that nurturing that you always desired at home. How people, did, did, people nurtured me when they said, great oh job. gosh, you did so good. I see you. Yeah. That's all I ever, I see you. Yeah. And I would feel that in those encounters. I don't know if they were being that deep and saying, I see you. Yeah. But it felt that's like it felt that's like what I'm they were saying. saying. Yeah. And I believe, yes, the natural gift is there, but I got, I, I feel like God was like, Okay, I'm going to give you something to, um, I'm going to give you a padding. I'm, I'm going to fill that hole in this way. Right. Yeah, I think that's what being in the arts did for me. People's reaction to my work. Yeah. yeah. So so did mom grow up with her dad too? She did. She did. So she, she did. And, and so now you are an actress, beautiful actress. Katie, she was on Instagram. She did this thing on for her birthday. She did the hair thing, went up like this right here. I had to FaceTime and said, child, just stop. Don't, come on. You driving these niggas crazy. <laughs> I went in a, it was, it was married men who couldn't just hit a light. They was putting fire under the chat, gonna get somebody whooped. I promise you, I'm not gonna say your name, sir, uh-huh. but I did see y'all on there. And though, and so yeah, now that there's no more, now that that's no longer your drug, right? Like, uh-huh. When they, when they say great job, mm-hmm. when you finally see the premiere, like I'll be honest with you, some things premiere, this show I watch all the time. That's why you should be subscribing, commenting, sending it to a whole <laughs> bunch of people because it's touching your heart because I actually watch this show. But I know I've done some shows on different networks and they'd be like, I seen you on such and such. But because that was no longer my drug of choice anymore, I'll be honest, sometimes I didn't even see it. Mm-hmm. Because I no longer liked the person that I seen because I knew I was acting. And I was like, I don't want to act no more. I don't, I don't want to pretend to be something that's happy, that's really dead on the inside. And not that it was a death of like, I couldn't do what I needed to do. I just knew that what I was looking for, the motive that I had was wrong. Like I wanted to show these people that look what you put against me. Mm. And at all costs, I still went out here and I'm winning, I'm winning. And then what I found that the Lord was saying was, if I could ever get your heart to be postured for the love, I will give you the overflow. I just want to talk to you a little bit about the process. If you've been through that process or like what feeds you now, if it's not the applause, if it's not the big role. When we started the conversation, you was like, you're going to have to make some money or it's going to do this. And it has to be a balance. There was a time little Jasmine just wanted to. Yeah. Like, so what, what is the thing now? Is that prayer? Is that a relationship? Like, I know you want kids. Like, is this something else that's your driving force now to keep, keep Jasmine going? Well, it's that thing that you just spoke about where it doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not, it, it doesn't work anymore. It's not hitting the same. Mm-hmm. It's not having the same effect. And then I sit in that loneliness. I sit in that, that emptiness, that seemingly lost place for a while. And at one point it almost like, I think I it almost might've took me out um, psychologically and emotionally just sitting in that, that emptiness, like not trying to do something, not trying to make something happen to feel it, to feel the void, you know, just being cool, just sitting in it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's next. I don't know what's coming. I, 
what am I going to do to get a fix, to feel peaceful, to feel happy, to feel grounded, to feel connected. It's okay. I just really had to um, like, I know it's something bigger than me. Like this isn't, you know, it, this isn't the it, Mm -hmm. you know, this isn't the mountaintop Mm -hmm. and the mountaintop is an inner peace. Indeed. And it's like getting to that. It's going to sound so simple, but I mean it, I really had to go to my word. It sounds so simple, but the Bible would sit next to my bed on the nightstand. I wouldn't pick it up. You know, I would be in that empty place, that dark place. I've known my whole life to call on Jesus. Like, you know, my grandmother, I was always in church, you know. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm supposed to do. That Bible would sit there. And um, I was like, what is it going to do for me? Like, okay, I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to read it. And then what? Like, is magic going to happen? Like, is it instantly going to go away? Like, mm-hmm. and um, just feeling like it can't be that simple. Like that feeling, like it can't be that simple. It can't be that easy. Like, mm-hmm. so I'm resisting it and avoiding it. Right. Mm-hmm. And then finally going to it and just picking it up just out of like, all right. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. You know, because I ain't got nothing else at this point. <laughs> right. I ain't got nothing else. I'm down right. to nothing, you yeah. know, like internally nothing. Yeah. And just reading the word. Mm-hmm. I remember like, you know, at times like and, and these have been different times. It's yeah. not one time. No, no, I get it. It's, it's, it's a flow. I yeah. come and I go. I come and I go. Yeah. But wanting to be there all the time, exactly. like desperately wanting exactly. it, you know. Yeah. But it's something about us making the choice. Yeah. Like that, that gap there. It's like, ah, yeah. I literally have prayed and said, God, take the free will away, please. Take the free Jeez. will away. I don't want it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want free will. Like, why would you do this to me? Like, I want to be a robot for you. Like, if you mm-hmm. say I'm supposed to be for you, I'm supposed to be bringing people <laughs> to the kingdom. Like, this is why we was created. Was mm-hmm. I'm, I'm created to be a light in the world. Right. Okay, I'm in the dark. I don't know how to get out of here. Like, what's up? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But when I, I know every time that I've had the courage to finally just go to it, Mm -hmm. you know, because after God has like done a miracle for me before, like got me out of the dark place. I don't know why it's so easy to forget. Yes. When, and it'd be so dramatic. I don't know why it's so easy to forget something that magnificent. I get mad at myself when I think about it. I'm like, I've seen what you've done for me before. Mm -hmm. Like, how could I so easily forget? And now I'm back in a valley. Now I'm back in a dark place. Yeah. Listen, can I just stay out of these places? <laughs> right. can, can you just make me a robot? I don't want to choose. Yeah. You shout, know? Out, shout out to everybody right there that's feeling it in your shine now. You definitely understand this feeling. And, um, you know, you know, Jasmine, as we put a bow on this thing, I just want to tell you, like, I appreciate your vulnerability. Like, I appreciate you kind of what we call in the industry, dropping the fourth wall and saying, you know what, this is where I was. This is where I am. And this is what I look forward to. Um, you know, on this final question, I just want to ask you this, and I really want you to be very, very honest about it, because I feel like there are a lot of women out there who are looking to be in the industry. People are wanting to be successful. What's Jasmine's ultimate heart goal? Like if this one thing or two things or three things could fulfill, make this heart whole after Jesus, right? Like what's the ultimate goal now after the success? Like what do you see in your heart and your head for Jasmine now that would be like mission accomplished? Hmm. Being in a position, putting myself in the position to call my own shots, Mm -hmm. period. You know, you work for other people for so long Mm -hmm. and you realize, wow, if they did it, I mean, what's stopping me? Like, Mm -hmm. I have some great ideas. Mm -hmm. Why am I sitting around waiting for the phone to ring? Right. (laughs) I could be working right now. You want children? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You want a husband? Absolutely. Is that like an ultimate goal or just kind of like, eh, if it happens, it happens? I definitely ultimately want children. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can keep the... 
Yeah, you no, like, no, no, <laughs> you like, no. You can keep this nigga home somewhere. No, I just no, need the no. baby. No, 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 no. You know, we got adoption no. going on. I got babies for days. They're no, a little older now. I ain't got no, no little babies no more. Absolutely not. Yeah. I want to raise my children in a family structure. Okay, praise like, God. they need their mom and their dad. Got it. I just told you how I saw the imbalance in my own life. That's true. That's true. I never want to impose. Just you made a face when I said, he was like, I'll take the kids. But no, but here's what I'm realizing, uh -huh. right? So people talk about marriage, right? And we all want it. Well, a lot of people want it. Yeah. But people don't, re I talk to so many married people and people don't realize it's a real partnership contract business thing. Like, yes, you love, love each other and you want that love and stuff. But when you have properties, children, assets. Don't get divorced. Because, <laughs> you know, you got to get that. You're literally tying your life. <laughs> you are. And if you get a divorce, <laughs> some of that go to him, some of that go to her. And it don't matter who did the work. It doesn't I matter. I digress. Go ahead. Yeah. it's a, People don't realize. And like, say for instance, you don't know how the person argues or like, oh yeah, and y'all get into a bad argument mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I want out. You can't go nowhere. Yeah. You ain't, where are you going? So are you a runner? Do, I mean, not, I ain't in your business, bitch, but I'm saying like runner emotionally. No, I'm not. I'm oh. all the way there. But when I feel like I'm not safe here, when I feel like I'm not protected here, when I feel like I'm not secure here, I must leave. I must vacate the premises. But how do we know what safe is like if you didn't have such a safe upbringing? Because I've seen other people. I've seen other people. So does it, so the, the trigger, the triggers of, so what you've seen is your example. Okay. But did you see the ins and out of what safety? What does safety look like? Oh, hate to stop you, change the scenery and the energy, but you ain't been obedient. You know how I know? Because you ain't subscribed. You ain't left no comment. You ain't shared this with nobody. Do it right now. Now back to the show. I, now. Do it. Good. Back to the show. Flat out. Okay. But did you see the ins and out of what safety? What does safety look like real quick? Safety to me yeah. is a healthy man in his mind. His okay. psyche is healthy. Okay. Like he has processed his own life, his own stuff, whatever yeah. it is. He's at least aware of it and he's making earnest efforts to process it. So a healthy minded man and a man that asks God to lead his life. Right. He doesn't rely on his own understanding. Like, And then, you know... Financially stable. And we oh, he got to have a bag. Come, we got children to raise. I'm not going to be in survival, world, uh, survival mode raising my children. See, that's the only thing. It mm -mm. may be a season of survival. Because no. I'll tell you, whether you have $10 million, like, you know, you got $10 million, but you may have $100 million in loans going out because you own a lot of commercial real estate. So there's always like... The Bible declares that the just shall live by faith. It really, really sucks that I can be up a quarter million dollars or $1.2 million and then I go on this big venture and I'm like, I want commercial property. And then I got to go to the bank and we now we got a team of people and now we in the hole $100 million and I still feel just as broke with having a dollar. It's like, so there's like different survival modes. So I just think sometimes, I guess, are we supposed to keep that away from our women? Poverty. No, no, no. You're talking about something different. Yeah. Not, not, but not, it's that, still broke. No, I still feel no, the but same that clearly, broke. No, it's not. That clearly is a man who is in his in his calling, and still on his path, as hell. doing the work. Mm -hmm. Now, we can work with that. Now, we can't work with someone who is still dreaming. Now, you go get your dream together, darling, and then we can still be friends as you're figuring things Why out. Why are ladies laughing? Y'all don't want dreamers? I will, support your, I will support you as a friend. Like, you got it, baby. You can do it. But don't come over here trying to tie your life with mine if you're still in dream mode. Okay? Because I can't, I, I can't raise a family on a dream. Why not? not? Not in the man's position. Not in the man's position. If you can't take on the responsibility of being a leader of a household, if that's not what you want to do, then just say you want to fool around. Just say you want a partner. Like, be honest. But don't come in here talking about you want a wife because you have to be a husband to be a, to have a wife. Okay. And being so, a husband a minute, means minute, that Jay. you're the leader it's and the head of the household. There's too many in this audience right I'm now. I'm speaking for the women. The, yeah, well, ladies. I'm about to check the women in a minute. Go ahead and get it out. Go ahead. Well, y'all show. Hit the bell for the ladies. 
They talking about hit the bell. Okay, so here's the thing. You know, I I always like to lead with a story. Okay. So making money, pretty willy, doing his thing. Go belly up, because now I got a call. I'm making thirty, forty thousand dollars in the club every single week, and then somehow I get saved, and the club and Jesus don't go together for some reason. I'm like, I can't go to the club no more. They just like, no, that's not what you're supposed to do. I I grew up Baptist, then now I'm going to coach the church. They won't let me do nothing. Definitely couldn't wear these little shorts up in there. You hear me? Game over. They going shot tat ba she tat ba she. You know, I'm I'm gone. And so now I'm in this crazy transi- tra- transition. The man that she met was still dreaming, still making a little money, still hustling. And I had to come in and tell this woman, like, I know what we was used to. I know what it was, but it ain't that no more. And I just got to really follow this calling on my life, which I know was extremely difficult. So even to this day, it's like, I just don't think many women understand the ebbs and flows. They say, I want a man who's following Jesus. I want a man that's following God. But what if what if Jesus tells me I got to move to Egypt and give it all away? And now we got to start from scratch. Like, what if there's a season again where a woman has to literally like, I know you've been sitting on your butt for a while. I've been handling my business. But now you got to go back to the workforce. You got to make that thing go. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, I just feel like sometimes women be like, well, you still dreaming. You're doing this. Like, I'm 44 years old. This here is still a dream. Don't get me wrong. I got some cool stuff going on where I can take care of like a few things. But I mean, I'll be honest with you. If you don't go on Patreon and we go over 4,000 soon, come on, somebody. You know, God going to keep us. But I'm still dreaming. And it's always it always hurts me when I see that on different platforms when women be like, that's right. You better take care of me. But I'm like, Mm -hmm. I think you just got to have a woman. Like, men, we just got to be clear on our vision. And maybe you get a woman who comes in and says, I'm here to enhance that vision. I'm here to sh- I'm here to say, I see something in you and you're going to get to the mountaintop. You know, it's unfortunate that my marriage didn't necessarily work the way I wanted to. But I will say, before it got so scary with me doing all this faith stuff for her, like, she was like, nah, nigga, like, I see you going to, the one thing you're going to do is go to work. You ain't making no bag, but one day. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You might. So do we have a one day woman in the crowd like one day? Or See, you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because I have to speak for the ladies. I've, you know, I got you. We're, you're you're mixing things that are not going together. OK. OK. So we're talking about people of a particular age. Of course, we're not talking about like 20 year olds. Everybody yeah. at their, in 20s are okay. still trying to so figure that was it the out. Age. Yes. We was 26. We and were you married? When I first you started. were twenty six. Yeah, I got married when you I was twenty six. That's right. That's right. That's right. So we're talking about different things, right? When you mm-hmm. get to a mature age, when you get in your thirties, thirties, forties, now you're looking at who can I go the rest of my life with? Who am mm-hmm. I going to share and do this life with? And at this age, I'm not going to do it with someone where we're trying to. Now, if we want to build something together, mm-hmm. of course. But if you're coming to me, you have to have your basics in order. You have to be on your path, whatever Mm -hmm. that is. Got it. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I come into your life and I'm like, well, babe, I don't have it together, but I got a dream. Just Mm -hmm. hold on, you know. So does does it do the same thing with women too? Should a man find a woman who's on her path? I'm hearing men say this a lot. Yeah. And Cause it's, it's a and lot it of gets on my like nerves. a woman. A woman asked me. I'm to like, come. are you asking for help? Are no, you she asking, asked me. Do, to come are you? To Hawaii. If you need help, just say that. Like, if it you was a woman called me and said, "I see you going through a lot. I don't want nothing from you, but I want to fly you to Hawaii with with me and friends or whatever. I ain't doing that. You get your own villa or whatever. Just cause she had it like that. Was she interested in you? She know me since high school, and she was just like, "I ain't That's never seen, seen your eyes like that." So. You know, I got it like that. But what happens is... A romantic partner, though. No, but what happened, though, KD? Here go the thing. Now you expecting every woman like, damn, you got it. You could just take me to Hawaii. I said, well, how, what I got to pay? And then, I, then of course, I had to go to the Lord. Lord, what you think? And the Lord was like, he didn't say hell no. Nah, but the way our relationship <laughs> set up, it felt hell no nah and shit by spirit. Well, he might have said hell no nah, because it's still no to hell, right? But it was like yeah. a no. Okay. But so now, we, now I'm like, it's women out there who can fly you to Hawaii on a Wednesday. And then you look at women like, you still building? <laughs> but see, men do it to women yeah. all the time. Like, this is something, are y'all experiencing this? Yeah. And men are doing too, this to women all, all the time. I think it's an epidemic <laughs> no. where men are like, well, what do you bring to the table? You know what? I, I guess, you know what? Let me call you back. Because, listen, if you don't realize my value, 
out the gate, then it's just not it for you. Because men, what I know about men, y'all know. And if you don't know, it's not it. It's very, you guys are simple. If a woman has to spend years and years and years growing on you, mm. no. Because when y'all meet a, a particular type of woman, oh, you, you'll tell your boys. First time, that's my wife. I've seen them do You that. ain't even spoke to her yet. It's that second time around for me, though. Like, you, oh, you need another dude, spin around the block. Dude, when a dude get to spin the block the second time, he's a lot more cautious. Like, and, it's, and it sucks for the second wife or the second husband. Yes. Because now you have some different borders and standards. Queen, Queenie, you going back the same way? No, you like, uh-uh, I'm looking at you. You can't just be fine. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, oh. I, I literally just told my homeboy, Rod, I said, I'm telling names and everything. Rod, I'm sorry. <laughs> I told Rod, I said, I said, fine is one thing. Uh -huh. But now I'm looking for like, I know where my life going. So I'm looking for purpose. Does she fulfill this? And here go the thing. She got to be cute, but she ain't got to have all that fine for me no oh, more. Oh, you don't feel that way anymore. Oh, no, I don't need all that fine. I don't even want to think about it. My wife going to spend a lot of time alone. Cause I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be creating when yeah. I, you ain't gonna have to worry about nothing, but they night might be every two weeks. You uh -huh. get to come into what we doing. Yeah. If she busy, uh -huh. I'm busy. That's going to be good. But I'm looking at things different. She got to be a little bit more than fine. Yeah. So do women, I just got to ask you this. I like where this conversation just went. So we're oh, at 40 yeah. minutes, but we'll edit some of that. Okay. But I got to catch this. I'll finish real shortly. Mm -hmm. I got to ask you this. Do women create like something in their head on like, Knowing that their purpose, do you all come up with purpose when y'all single and be like, this is what the man has to be for what I have, or does or does it is it different? Like, do we come up with our standard? I'm not necessarily a standard. Like, I know so much of what I know what the personality type is that I want. Oh, you do? You've narrowed it down. But she ain't gotta be in everybody's face. Mm -hmm. If she in the room, I want you to see her, and I want her to be exactly who she is. But she ain't really just always just trying to be uh, as as uh, what my boy say all in the videos <laughs> uh, dancing. You knew where come to going. death row. She ain't doing that. <laughs> but I'm being very particular now because I understand what I need what her to be need. for me. Like, yeah. do women go? So it ain't even mm. a status of finances for me. It's a personality type. Like, I'm looking for a personality. If she come up with some finances, that's dope. But my daddy 91. My mom ain't have to work unless she wanted to. Like, that's just the way I came into it. Why can't we? That's what we saying. That's what we saying. So the but modern women can't humility. have that now? It, it has to be some humility. Like, because understand, like, now women making money. Like, they doing so much now. You could, you know, you could very well be looking at a woman making millions and trillions of dollars. And you still, you know, doing a couple hundred thousand. And so then you'll meet a woman who's also still dreaming but she got the same attitude as the woman who making millions. I'm just like, now, nah, wait a minute now. <laughs> the girl with the millions is a little bit more humble than you. You know what I mean? She might not have had the, the little bump you got, but she was just a little bit more humble. So I think men are now changing their standards in terms of, like, I ain't got, especially in Atlanta, you like, I ain't got to deal with this, you know? And I think that's really, really hard. So do women look at personality types or are they only looking at our wallets and our, and our accomplishments? Um... I think for any woman, I think first is going to be security for every woman. Hey, Amen. Going over there. Okay. Why do women stay with men who have a lot of money and they run them up? You know, why do women stay with men who don't have a lot of money and let them run them up? I don't know. That's <laughs> I just thought about that. I was like, wow, it goes well, the other way. I have too. a whole like, lot. I was still running. I can't them speak up. for Pray everybody. For but um, yeah, no, um, I think we should. I, I don't. Yeah. But first for a woman will be security. You're the head of the household. You're my leader. Yeah. You're my leader. You're in charge of leading the direction my life goes in. Yeah. Do you know how big of a responsibility that is? For a man to be in, for a woman to relinquish her whatever power she has and say, I now put my power in your hands. You just helped me with for you point. to lead and guide the direction of my life. Yeah. I need to know you're stable. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to lead me into a ditch and off a cliff. And God didn't bring me this far for that to happen. So you're darn right. Have your stuff in order. I love it. So I just got helped. <laughs> um, This was dope, man. This conversation went to a whole lot of places. But I think I want to put a bow right here. Okay. You know, in terms of relationships, 
I understand that there's a lot of different things that play on our hearts and what we want and what we need. You know, when I was broken because my mother had put me up for adoption, I realized that I was so broken that what I was looking for was somebody to help me with my brokenness. And so I invited a certain energy and a spirit that although very confident, because of my parents always telling me, even though you five foot nothing, you the most adorable thing in the world, right? There was nothing that Willie can do wrong. There was nothing in the world that I can do wrong. And so coincidentally, I did most things right, you know, with the exception of, you know, trying to be hard a little bit because I was so little. But for the most part, I always I always wanted to be a shining light to the parents who took a ch who made a choice to adopt me. And I attracted certain women who had similar trauma. However, I think now in this older age, being healed, going through therapy, I now understand that broken pieces still color, but whole crayons color better. I know you heard that so many times, some of you, broken crayons still color. But I believe that our father in this season of our life wants us to be whole and give a new package to the world so it can not only be used by you, because if the crayon is broken, it can only be used by you. But if it's whole, many people can be touched by the colors in your coloring box. Family, I don't necessarily know exactly where you are with your life right now, but I do know this, that until you experience wholeness on the inside through Jesus, right? Until you experience wholeness, you don't have the right to bring anybody in to something that has not been fulfilled by the Father. Some of us have made so many decisions prematurely. And I just feel in my heart right now, those premature mistakes, those premature decisions have had a residual effect on your life and on your future. And as you sit there now with these different stains on you because you allow somebody in your personal space, you allow certain instances to come into your life, God sitting in the background like, red flag, I never wanted him in there anyway. And now sometimes the people who are called to actually be a part of your bigger purpose now get the short end of the stick because of our experience. So my prayer today is that you would understand in your heart that the bigger goal is for you to be whole. And God will begin to reveal and make things so clear to you once you experience wholeness. Here's the thing. People calling right now because they need wholeness, right? Here's the thing. I want to be very, very honest with you, and, I, and I'm going to get out the way. I never knew what wholeness felt like until I decided to feel the pain. You got to feel it so he can heal it. You can't put somebody in a place of pain. You can't numb it with alcohol. You can't numb it with an ass shot on Instagram and somebody like you like it and you feel good for a moment. Fellas, you can't buy another Cuban link that only feel good for a moment. God is saying, feel it so I can heal it. There's a place in your heart that only Jesus can feel. It's a big word that always comes in my heart when I get into these conversations that God would tap me on the shoulder all the time and give it to me. But I was just like, bro, I'm just going to try to buy me another little car. I'm going to try to get on BET. I'm going to try to do this. But God was like, surrender it to me. Kings don't toil. Queens don't toil. They receive freely. Everything they want comes to them and they steward it correctly. Toiling is the peasant's bread. I want you out of toiling. How does that happen through wholeness? I ain't never did this on the podcast because I like to keep it real and have fun and be entertaining, but I just feel led today like to say a quick prayer for you. No matter what your metaphysical orientation, I stand strong on the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord. Through my surrender to him, my life has become something that I could only imagine in my dreams. And even now, he's still expanding it. I offer that to you today in a prayer. Father God, I honor you and I thank you for every listener today who got an opportunity to hear a male's perspective, to hear a woman's perspective. And literally, they get an opportunity to see what the process of wholeness looks like. Father, I pray that they don't bring people in prematurely that can only distract and deter what you're trying to make them focused on, and that's you. 
Father, every heart under, under the sound of my voice has some things on the inside that are unhealthy. I pray that you feel the broken pieces so they can go out and be a colorful light to everybody they encounter. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Do me a favor. Subscribe to this channel. Share it with somebody. Shout out to my fabulous guest, Jasmine Burke, with the eyelashes and saints and sinners. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Um, and I want to say thank you guys so much for making this show one of the most sought after shows um, around the world. Like people are watching, they're having a good time. And mama, thank you for telling me to stop cussing. I only did it three times on this one. My mama called me. She 82 KD. She said, you know, I like some of them cuss words you did, but some of them misplaced. <laughs> I said misplaced. Yeah, the hell and the is good but sometimes that little s word i don't like the way it feel on you i said well your husband been saying it since i was born and i talk to him more now at 91 because i'm afraid to lose him <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. so pray for me mama i love you to life remember the past is history the future is a mystery the present's a gift that's why they call it the present lock in love you more flat out <laughs> yes lord you know i gotta keep it real with you but what i want you to do is i want to make sure that you share this you comment you click like engage with us Listen, everybody wants to be celebrated, not just tolerated. Don't just tolerate us. Celebrate us by liking, sharing, and commenting. Can't do it without you. That's all you got to do. Just click it. Do that for me. See you next week. Flat out. Love you more. Love you more. Love you more.